On February 4th, 2013, 10 years ago today, Fire Emblem Awakening released for the 3DS in North America. As some of you may know, this game was designed to be the possible last entry in the Fire Emblem series, although by the point of its release in North America, it was clear that would not be the case. Fire Emblem Awakening became the best-selling Fire Emblem game ever at the time, with nearly 2 million copies sold, a figure since passed by Fire Emblem Fates in Three Houses. Since Awakening's release, the series has released four new mainline entries, two Warriors spin-off games, one popular mobile game, and the not-quite-Fire Emblem, not-quite-Shin Megami Tensei crossover, Tokyo Mirage Sessions. In most of those games, you can see the direct influence and legacy of Fire Emblem Awakening, and today, I want to take you through the journey of Awakening. What in Fire Emblem led up to Awakening, Awakening success, how the game holds up the legacy of this game, and then my personal journey to Awakening and why this game means so much to me. I hope you find this journey informative and enjoyable. So let's get started. The story of Awakening generally begins with the challenge set to the team. Awakening needed to sell at least 250,000 copies or else the series would be finished. Given how big the series has gotten since then, it's easy to dismiss that figure nowadays, but it was a sign of how the series had stumbled in recent history. Now, figuring out exact sales figures for older games in the series is challenging, but it is clear that after strong sales for Fire Emblem Blazing Blade and Fire Emblem Sacred Stones, things started to go downhill. Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn underperformed both in Japan and especially in the West. Shadow Dragon, the remake of the first game in the series, bounced back up compared to Radiant Dawn but still couldn't even sniff the sales of the GBA entries. This led to the Japan-only release of New Mystery of the Emblem, the remake of the third game of the series, which did barely eclipse the 250,000 sales number. It's clear, though, that Nintendo was concerned about these numbers. Fire Emblem was dropping sales on their releases for the hugely popular Wii and DS systems, while other games were soaring to new sales heights, such as the new IP Xenoblade Chronicles, which sold more than double what Radiant Dawn did. It's not a perfect comparison, but the evidence was there that Fire Emblem was failing to gain a strong audience in the West while struggling to keep their fanbase in Japan. Perhaps the series had reached its limit and people were getting tired of strategy games as evidenced by other strategy series such as Shining and Valkyria Chronicles struggling during this same time period. The time had come for the next Fire Emblem game, a game that would be moving the series from the DS to the 3DS, but it wasn't looking rosy for the series in general. Before going on to talk about Awakening and its development though, I want to talk about the Nintendo 3DS. Unlike the DS, the 3DS was not an immense hit for Nintendo, especially initially. The lifetime sales of the 3DS ended up about half of the lifetime sales of the DS, and some of that was a change in the market, but it's also a sign that the 3DS had some struggles, especially early on. The 3DS released in late February of 2011. After the system undersold Nintendo's expectations though, they re-evaluated and decided to do a couple things to raise those sales. Number one, a price cut of nearly a third of the original price, and number two, new incentives of older games added free to the system for those early adopters called the Nintendo 3DS Ambassador Program. This shift increased sales of the system from the previous quarter significantly right towards the end of 2011. All these new users though would be looking for shiny new games in addition to the retro titles that they got through the Ambassador Program, which leads me back to the first major Nintendo published title of the following year, Kid Icarus Uprising. Kid Icarus was a franchise whose most recent game prior to Uprising came out in 1991. The expectations for this long dormant series, whose last game wasn't even published in Japan, were likely low, but the team poured their heart into the game and the public responded. Now where have I heard this before? Kid Icarus Uprising sold over a million copies. That success showed Nintendo they had an audience for their games beyond the flagship Mario, Zelda, and Pokemon titles. And next up on the docket was Fire Emblem Awakening. After the ultimatum set to the team by Nintendo, there was a lot of thought put into how this new game could gain new fans with some initial proposals consisting of wild diversions from the series precedents, such as a modern era game or one set on Mars. What they settled on in the end though was a game that would feel like a culmination of the series so far, and it's pretty clear to see in Awakening's settings and mechanics. 
The setting of the game was the two continents of Arcanea and Valentia, now named Elise and Vom, where the first three games of the series took place. Awakening brought back marriage and children from Genealogy of the Holy War, a traversable world map and optional grinding battles from Gaiden and Sacred Stones, branching class promotions like in Sacred Stones, a My Unit character initially from Blazing Sword but more heavily inspired by New Mystery of the Emblems My Unit who was an actual playable character and had supports with other characters, reclassing units to any other class albeit limited by use of a certain item coming over from the Shadow Dragon remake, and finally a game mechanic taken from New Mystery to help Awakening appealed to a broader audience, a casual mode which allowed players to lose units in battle without them permanently dying. The playable My Unit character in casual mode would be the first time those mechanics were included in a Western Fire Emblem release. For those games that didn't directly influence the game's mechanics, there were other nods from weapons and dialogue callouts to actual characters in Spot Pass or DLC for the Telia series and others. This is not to say that Awakening didn't have unique additions to the Fire Emblem gameplay formula as well. Fire Emblem Awakening introduced some new classes and units such as the Toggle Beast unit. The game also added an S support conversations which gave more choice and context to romance, but by far the biggest addition was pair up and dual strike slash dual guard. These mechanics had a huge impact on the gameplay of Awakening, with paired units getting stat bonuses and the dual striking guard using percentage chances improved by higher support ranks to determine follow-up strikes or complete damage blocks. The strategy of Awakening, especially at higher difficulties, was consumed by these mechanics and it's been an enduring part of Awakening's legacy which I'll get into later. There are other notable but less specific changes Awakening brought to the formula in part because of its release on a more powerful system such as more detailed animated cutscenes, camera view changes, and some small voice acting segments. For the most part though, Awakening had one really big new idea and then a bunch of iterations on older game systems that they would use to try to appeal to audiences new and old. The staff had worked really hard to bring this vision of a culmination of the series to Fire Emblem Awakening. And on April 19th, 2012, Fire Emblem Awakening released in Japan with the hopes of the franchise on its back. All it needed for the series to continue was a modest success, but Awakening had other ideas, and instead, it changed the entire direction of the series. During its opening week in Japan, Fire Emblem Awakening sold 242,600 units, and the level of demand caused unexpected shortages in physical copies and a crashed website for ordering the limited edition version, which Nintendo clearly learned from and never had issues with again. By the beginning of 2013, the game had sold over 450,000 copies in advance of the Western release of the game localized by 8.4. The game released in the West on February 4th, 2013 in North America, and April 19th and 20th in Europe and Oceania respectively. The success of the game carried over, with the game selling 180,000 copies in the first month in North America, and over its lifetime achieving over 2 million sales worldwide, making it the best-selling Fire Emblem game of all time, until Fate's Three Houses and likely Engage pass it. On top of the amazing sales figures was the immense critical praise with the game registering a 92 rating on Metacritic, making it the second best reviewed 3DS game of all time behind Ocarina of Time. The lowest critical score on the site registers as an 8 out of 10, an astounding achievement for the series, and this continued into award season with numerous nominations and award wins in categories such as Best Handheld Game, Best RPG, and Best Strategy Game. Why did Awakening do so well? I would argue there are several reasons with no specific one being the dominant answer. The first answer is that the quality of the title drew in a new crowd of players who had just gotten their 3DS consoles and were hungry for games to play that looked good, and Awakening looked good. The timing of release was great as well, coming after a well-received game in Kid Icarus Uprising while still being a pretty early addition for the first party lineup of the 3DS. Obviously, a strong marketing push and Awakening being the first non-remake game for the series since Radiant Dawn helped as well, and lots of new features such as marriage, children, and casual mode were designed to entice new players to join in the fun. As with a lot of things in life, the answer is multifold, but Fire Emblem Awakening quelled Nintendo and Intelligent Systems' fears and gave the series new life which they took full advantage of. Before getting into what came after Awakening though, let's talk about the game itself. How does Fire Emblem Awakening hold up a decade later? 
While critical praise for the game was incredibly high, fan reception to Awakening has always come with quite a bit of criticism. Most Fire Emblem fans I know still really like Awakening, but almost all of them had issues to bring up as well. However, there is no universal opinion we can point to, so this section is going to be subjective because I can't pull every Fire Emblem fan on the planet, and also objectivity when it comes to art critique is impossible. Here though are my own thoughts, and those I've heard or read from others about how Fire Emblem Awakening holds up, starting with the presentation. I'm starting with the presentation because it is one of the areas I think gets pretty strong praise and not as much critique from the fanbase. The animated cutscenes are excellent and I think hold up incredibly well with the striking animation and action. The in-game graphics are choppy and less refined, but the overall setting and environments are still nice. The character design has always been a solid feature in my view. I love the work of Yusuke Kozaki. There's only one design that I still see brought up as bad, and yeah, Noe is questionable. Everyone else has great and distinctive art. I point to Awakening as well as a turning point for Fire Emblem music. The 3DS era has the best music in the series in my opinion, and that really starts with Awakening. Such an excellent score that embraced the broad spectrum of tones over the course of the game. The UI and UX is still very clean and easy to navigate with strong information presentation. Lastly, while the voice acting is pretty limited, the few fully voiced cutscenes are excellently done, especially compared to the Tellius games. Kudos to Matt Mercer as Krom and Laura Bailey as Lucina especially. Overall, the presentation holds up well with the in-game graphics being the only thing that would need major updates if the game was brought to Switch. Moving from one of the least critiqued parts of Awakening to one of the most, we have the story. The premise of the game involves our amnesiac player character Robin being found by Krom, the brother of the leader Emerin, who runs this force called the Shepherds who help protect the Halavdom of Elise. Peace though is hard to come by with forces near and far vying to take Elise down for various reasons, and behind it all is the fell dragon Grima. Unexpected help comes from a mysterious masked figure who goes by the name of the legendary hero Marth. I think the premise is good, but that's not surprising. Usually story issues come in the execution, and that's where Awakening has some struggles. Awakening has three main arcs. The first arc involving the conflict with the nation of Plegia and its king Gangrel, then the Vom arc with the ambitions of the warlord Walhart, and finally the Grima arc where everything comes to a head with the fell dragon. While individual moments in each arc are not just fine but great, the inclusion of all of them makes the game feel somewhat bloated and less attention and care is given to each part of the story. There is an attempted throughline, but the second arc pretty much ignores it in favor of its own conflict centered around Walhart and Seiri. I'm not saying any part of this is badly told, but there's simply too many plot lines a lot of the time. If they had simplified, it would have made it easier for the plot lines to all form together and make a coherent and well-told story, but that is not what they told. Their ambitions ran ahead of them in trying to include all of these different arcs, and while it led to a lot of great characters, I love Seiri, she's amazing, it didn't necessarily lead to the best development for the existing characters such as Krom. An area that I also know has mixed opinions on with the writing that I still think is good and why I think the game still works for me is the character writing. A lot of the characters occupy typical tropes you've seen in many works previously, and if that was all there was to them, certainly critique would be merited. I believe though that Awakening's writers really considered how these characters would interact with each other and work in the world. Robin is the best Avatar character in the series with one of the strongest senses of personality of that character type. The support writing has some missteps in certain supports, but overall leads to strong character depth for many of the cast. I could talk about all of the good characters of the cast, and I have in the past, but everyone is going to have their own opinions and experiences. I love Lyssa because I've loved her from the first moment I played, and other characters I had to grow to appreciate because I didn't initially use them, such as Libra. The characters hold up quite well in my opinion, with several absolute standouts in the cast, and no one that I would say is an outright bad character, just a couple boring ones at best. I love Lissa for being a prankster, I love Frederick's overly serious personality, I love the perfectionism of Cordelia, the warmth of Sumia, there are so many lovely characters in this cast. My love for the Awakening cast may be even stronger now than it was back then, and that's because every time I go back to the game, they do more to surprise and intrigue me. 
As for gameplay, what I and many other fans of the game enjoy about Awakenings Combat is the variety of powers. The skill system coupled with the child inheritance and the second seals for class changes allows for some crazy combinations. You can fight normally if you want, or you can make an unstoppable army of juggernauts gale forcing their way around the map and clearing battles in a turn or two. Awakening is unbalanced, both with the inheritance and second seals and also the pair up and dual strike slash guard mechanics, but having those new elements made Awakening a refreshing experience. These mechanics got refined, but simply the act of getting to play with this awesome new toy was intoxicating, and I think that feeling remains even with more balanced systems appearing in later entries. This is not to say there isn't still a challenge for most players. Lunatic Plus mode is absolutely notorious. To me then, Awakening can offer a malleable gameplay style that can meet you at your challenge level unless you're all the way to the upper echelon of low turn count players, and even then self-imposed challenges are more than welcome. Much like with the divide on casual and classic mode, I think Awakening can offer the experience you're looking for, especially on consecutive runs. I actually think Awakening, due to the unit customization and various difficulty modes, offers more replay value than pretty much any Fire Emblem game before Three Houses. It can suffer somewhat coming back to it from later systems like Fates that took what Awakening did and made it better, but as with a lot of things, it has managed expectations that leads to enjoyment. To me then, the gameplay still holds up for Awakening in that it's just plain fun, and I love coming back to the game with new ideas of how to take on the various maps. Does that mean that the gameplay design is great? No. A lot of the map designs have their issues, and an unbalanced game does limit the fun for various players. It is not a perfect system. I still enjoy it, and I think that most people will still get enjoyment from Awakening systems even now 10 years later. The group I work with, Cerulean Skies, brings up the idea of the vibes of a game frequently. Some games are going to vibe with you more than others, and games in the past that vibe with you might not in the present. Awakening has impeccable vibes, and I still felt it when I played through again. It feels like coming home, a comfortable place where I know what to expect and can explore new things in the space if I want to, or just soak in the nostalgia at other times. That's Fire Emblem Awakening, and to me, even a decade later, it still holds up. Fire Emblem has hit the ground running since Awakening, with four mainline releases since then, and Awakening's influence is evident in several ways. I do want to start though with the spin-offs, as the first Warriors game had plenty of Awakening characters in it. Tokyo Mirage Sessions included Krom, Virion, and Tharja as Mirages, and Heroes has most of the Awakening cast added already with many seasonal alts for popular characters like Lucina. These are obvious references, and there are some similar references in mainline titles starting with Fates. Fates is very clearly Awakening's successor. They have three characters returning for that game, three characters who are direct references to popular Awakening characters, a refined pair-up and dual strike slash guard system, the same character artist working on the game, and child units with inheritable skills. Those are the obvious influences, but even the route split appears to be to be a reaction to Awakening. Want more Awakening-style gameplay? Play Birthright. Want a more challenging experience than Awakening? Play Conquest. That's how they were talked about at the time, and even the route split to begin with I think comes about from criticism of the three arcs in Awakening. To give that same grand sense of adventure while also giving each story sufficient time, Faith decided to not just do a route split, but an entire game split. How that worked out is a mixed bag, but I see that decision coming in part because of Awakening. Shadows of Valencia as a remake didn't have to take further inspiration from Awakening, but I still believe that the game had to live up to the standards set on visuals and music by Awakening. The bigger influence, though, was the inclusion of an extra story that connected Shadows of Valencia to Awakening through Grima, giving greater context and background for the game. There may have been some other references, but Shadows of Valencia brought the 3DS era of Fire Emblem to a close, but not Awakening's legacy. Three Houses embraced even more of the class change system than Awakening ever did, and included a time skip more reminiscent of Genealogy of the Holy War, but more recently done by Awakening. Then we come to Engage, which, at least in reviews, was compared to Awakening as a return to the series' roots as compared to Three Houses. There is similarity between the games at the very least because of the Fell Dragon Resurrection plotline and a more clearly defined personality for the Avatar protagonist. I won't go into further details though for spoiler reasons. 
every single non-remake game after Awakening has had marriage between characters and player agency, especially with the Avatar's choice of marriage partner, a clear influence of Awakening on the Fire Emblem franchise. Finally, Awakening is the Fire Emblem game with the most representation in the Super Smash Bros. series with Robin, Lucina, and Krom in the cast. While some Smash Bros. fans would argue that this is a negative legacy of Awakenings, it's clear that both Intelligent Systems and Nintendo regard Awakening as a game deserving of recognition now and moving forward. After Fates' success, Nintendo announced that Fire Emblem was now considered a major IP for the studio and have been treating it as such with a dedicated Fire Emblem Direct and other prominent placement in subsequent Directs. The fanbase has continued to grow likewise, demonstrated when Three Houses won the 2019 Player's Choice Award at the Game Awards. All of this came about because of Awakening and the direction it sent the series. I know there are plenty of people who have questions about the direction that the series went, but it is very clear to me that Awakening was the originator of so many of the trends that Fire Emblem is now embracing. Next up though, I want to talk about my journey to Fire Emblem Awakening as my first ever Fire Emblem game. I've talked about this before briefly, but I regard Fire Emblem Awakening as the beginning of my gaming renaissance. As a kid, I usually played games that aligned with my interests in history, civilization, Age of Empires, Sid Meier's Pirates, Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic, Lego Star Wars, Battlefront, or sports, Madden, Backyard Sports, NBA Live. By high school though, I would switched over to focus more on games that I would play with friends, League of Legends, Team Fortress 2, Call of Duty, but I wasn't gaming all that much overall. Then I got a 2DS after my senior year had completed. The first few games I got I enjoyed, Tomodachi Life is still the game I have the most hours on for the 3DS, and Mario Kart and Pokemon are classics. After playing those games though, I went in search of something new. And in that search, I found Fire Emblem Awakening. I was intrigued, and lo and behold, the game had a demo. More games should have demos, and I gave it a try. I was in love with the game so quickly. And since my birthday was coming up, I requested a copy. My sisters teamed up to get me it and changed everything. I played on classic mode, married Lissa, and fought my way through to the final battle where I painstakingly positioned and planned out to have my Robin deal the final blow, and then discovered I didn't need to do that because it was actually a cutscene choice. There were quite a few bumps in the road. As I was playing on classic, my units would permanently die if I messed up, and I messed up constantly. My final team didn't even use up all the deployment slots because so many of them were dead. My final team was Krom, Robin, Lissa, Morgan, Flavia, Basilio, Noe, Na, Anna, and Tharja. I didn't even know about Pair Up until the second time I played through. I guess I completely skipped over that tutorial. Despite my ineptitude though, I was enchanted, and I was enchanted by multiple aspects, each of which led me to other games that I loved. I loved the strategy of it, but I also loved the tone and the way the story unfolded. I believe the one chapter, and I don't need to say anything beyond that for people who have played it, the one chapter that brings it all together where the music, the setting, combat, everything brought together to make an incredible experience. I was blown away by that moment and I still get chills every time that song plays or I get reminded of that moment. and. That showed me the power of gaming, of storytelling in this format. It was incredible and I wouldn't have gotten it if I hadn't played Fire Emblem Awakening and led to so many other games that I love. The turn-based strategy led me next to XCOM and then to Valkyria Chronicles, both series I adore. The JRPG connection sent me towards Trails and Persona, and that's a path I clearly have continued down as any of you who watch my channel know. The lengthy and intricate story to me at the time, it was my first experience of that sort of story in games since Knights of the Old Republic, led on to games like The Witcher, and I could go on. Yusuke Kozaki led me on to I the Somnium Files. Most of the games I have played in the nine years since I played Fire Emblem Awakening, I can trace back to that fateful choice. This whole channel exists because of Fire Emblem Awakening and exactly how much it inspired me to explore this genre in many different directions and share my love for them with all of you. It also inspired me to go back and play previous games. It took until Blazing Sword for me to not be absolutely terrible at the game, but you know, better late than never. 
and I am excited where the trails that originated back then will take me next. Fire Emblem Awakening will always hold a special place in my heart, just as it does many others, and for that, I will be eternally grateful to Intelligent Systems and Nintendo for making this wonderful game. Fire Emblem Awakening is many things, which I think can be summed up by saying Fire Emblem Awakening was an inflection point. There are plenty who love, and plenty who don't love, what Awakening is and the direction it took the Fire Emblem series. It cannot be denied though that it was a turning point for the series. The challenge set to the developers caused them to pull out all the stops and make a game that, while somewhat messy, drew players in new and old and revived the series. Its main legacy will always be the continuation of Fire Emblem, but for me and many others, it's more personal than that, and that's one of the beautiful things about any form of art, games included. While some may say I'm blinded by nostalgia, I think Fire Emblem Awakening was a fantastic game then, and remains so now. Here's to the 10 year anniversary of Fire Emblem Awakening in North America, a game that will be talked about for many years still to come. Thank you for indulging me. If you will do so a little more, I would greatly appreciate any likes, shares, and comments you can give to this video. I know it's not my usual fare, but I felt the need to do something to pay tribute to this game that has been so important to me since I first played it. Subscribe to keep up with the channel, my next Fire Emblem video will be on a more recent game, I promise. And I hope to see you in the next video. Have a great day, and happy gaming.